What's up guys, Nick here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to be going over some major portfolio updates I just did. And as you can see with the portfolio, I'm at $45,879.12. Seems that I have really struggling to go past $45,000. I feel like I've been stuck there for the majority of the year, but we actually had a nice gain of $208.80. And I earned $16.42 this week in dividends. And if we go over to my activity feed, on the 11th, I received a $21.19 dividend from Altria Group. Then I deposited $125, as I do every Monday. And I had my one buy of SCHD. Then on the 15th, I earned a ton of dividends, all from my REITs. So I received $27.36 from BXMT, $12.13 from FRT, $6.53 from Realty, which I think that's a two cent increase from uh, last month. They did a dividend increase. And then $5.32 from STAG. And all that money is right here in the $72.53 in my cash balance. And that's gonna go into SCHD. So let's actually go over to the dividend income. I just wanna show you that I've already hit over a hundred, I've already hit over a hundred dollars for the month of July. And that happened two days ago on the 15th when I received all those dividends from the REITs. So it's always nice to see when you break $100 at the midway point of the month. And I'm really hoping that July sort of matches April or actually increases. So I'd like to make over $190. Right now, my portfolio is averaging about $193 a month. And my goal is to get that to $200 a month by the end of the year. So here would be December once I get there. I like this yellow number to be 200 a month because that would be awesome to earn $2,400 in a year in dividends. And as you can see, we're halfway through the seventh month of the year and I have $1,267.71, really close to beating the entire year of last year. I think by the end of August next month, I'll have passed what I made in the entirety of 2021, which is pretty cool to pass your dividend income of the previous year. So that'll be exciting. Now, as I talked to, to go over my portfolio update, and as I talked about last week, in my Quadfecta portfolio, I decreased NUSI from 25% to 10%. And I increased JEPI from 25 to 40%. If we actually go into NUSI, you can see that I've lost quite a bit of money in capital gains. You can see I put in $2,337.68. And the current value is $1,660.74. So I've lost $676.94. And I've earned $111.00 dollars and 85 cents in dividends now i'm going to keep nusi because i would like to see what happens with that dividend income when eventually the market rises i'd like to see if my market gain goes down and what happens to the dividend income because it has been decreasing over the months so that's sort of, sort of what i'm looking at and Right now, I'm not investing any money into the Quadfecta portfolio. I'm putting all of my money into SCHD because I would like to gain the dividend growth. And SCHD, as I've shown before, also tracks the S&P 500. It could actually be outperforming the S&P 500 right now. But if not, it's very close. And just to show you here real quick, my market gain for my overall portfolio is $2,004.82. I've been up as much as $6,600, maybe $6,700. That's not a big deal. And I've earned over $3,000 in dividends. So that's $3,142.54 since I've started the portfolio in 
on September 17th of 2019. And so what I want to go over the major portfolio updates. I increased SCHD right here from 5% to 10%. And as you can see, I'm a fourth of the way there. So I've calculated this out. I've taken this number, 1,164, 43 cents, multiplied it by four. It's about $4,600, which I should be able to complete SCHD, get it to the 10% allocation by the end of the year. And so the stocks that I decreased, let me go to edit because it makes it easier to see. So if I go down here, I decreased Walmart from 2% to 1%. Clorox as well from 2% to 1%. I also decreased Verizon from 2% to 1% and Colgate from 2 to 1. And then I also lowered Johnson & Johnson from 3 to 2. I'm going to find it right there. And so the reason I did this was I see Clorox, Verizon, Colgate, and Walmart these are a lot of companies that have very low dividend growth. And I don't want to sell them. I want to keep them because they're still going to pay the dividends. But as far as Walmart, like I said, low dividend growth. So I want that to be a lower allocation of my portfolio. Same with Colgate. Clorox just had a really bad dividend increase of, of about 1.6, maybe 1.7%. And as you know, Colgate shot up in value during the pandemic there and it was absolutely insane how much clorox rose and then just like that it also tanked a lot as you can see it says i'm down 12.41 percent or if you don't count the earned dividends i'd be down even more but you can actually see it shot up here and then it crashed and then it came back up and crashed down and it's slowly rising, but like I said, I don't see Clorox as a stock that I want to have as a high allocation. Another thing, Johnson & Johnson, I lowered that to 2% because they're going to be splitting their business three different ways. And I'm not sure what that is going to do to the dividend. So I'd rather have less exposure in that. And also... With SCHD, I see this stock potentially being a minimum of 40% of my portfolio. And then all of the rest, it could be more, it could be 50. Anywhere from 40 to 50, I'm looking at real estate going down to 10% and the quad factor going to 10 and then everything else being 1%. But that'll be way in the future. Right now, I'm still testing the waters with SCHD and with my quad factor. As you can see, it's 15.5% out of one. And I want to get that down. I also want to get my real estate down from 22.7 to 20%. It used to be 26, 27%. But because I've been putting money into SCHD and all my other stocks, it's been going down. And so that's pretty much it with the updates. In the future, I don't know, I might reduce some more stocks, but so far, I'd say my portfolio is pretty well balanced and pretty well protected, especially with the fact that now I have Verizon at 1%. I have IBM, Altria, and 3M at 1%. Those are some of my riskier stocks. And of course, the Quadfecta, over time, that is going to go down in allocation so that I can have better a better spread with my passive income from this portfolio because I don't want to just rely on the four stocks in my Quadfecta account for income. I want to have a wide range of paychecks for my dividends. That way I could be well diversified. And so that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next week and don't forget to like this video and subscribe.